and welcome back to Mythical Creature Comforts. Now, those of you who are upset that we did not have a video last week, I warned you that was going to happen because it was my birthday and I won't apologize for it. It won't happen. Mm -mm. Which brings us to today. Nymphs. 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 Fun, 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 fun. I'm stalling. I'm sorry. Okay, so nymphs. They are Greek mythological creatures or beings. Uh, minor, they're always female. There are no male nymphs. It's just stick to your satyrs, guys. And they are nature deities that are typically associated with particular location or landforms. Fun stuff like that. They're seen as divine spirits who animate nature. They're usually depicted as beautiful, young, naked women. Nine times out of ten, they're naked. Which is fun when you're looking at pictures. They love to sing and dance. Uh, they're not known to die of old age or of illness. They can die, though. They can be killed. That's That's very important. And they can also... Give birth to immortal children, so long as baby daddy happens to be one of the gods. Fun times. They are either depicted on their own as their own separate beings, or as part of the entourage of a god. Uh, some gods that had entourages of nymphs were Dionysus, Hermes, Pan. Go figure, Pan, right? As well as, believe it or not, Artemis. Those are the four names that came up. They didn't others didn't actually come up, but I wouldn't be surprised if other people if other gods had their own little entourage of nymphs and so on and so forth, because they're gods. They're fickle. They do it. And as I mentioned, they are the frequent target of satyrs. Usually for uh, less than consensual fun, which I actually kind of, we're, we're going to get to that in a minute when we go through pop culture before I get ahead of myself. Uh, this video, we are going to focus on nymphs in the broad sense of the term. We're, we're not going to get into the nitty gritty, the different types of nymphs. I am going to list what I found of the different types of nymphs, but I'm not going to get into specific nymphs or anything like that because we're talking about the creatures as a whole. We're not really... If you guys want it bad enough, then later, possibly once the Jar of Doom has been exhausted, I will do videos on the individual types of nymphs. But basically, you have... Celestial nymphs, land nymphs, wood and plant nymphs, which are different than land nymphs because land nymphs have to do with the earth and plant nymphs, or they come out of the... Yeah. You got water nymphs, you got underworld nymphs, and apparently also the muses are nymphs, which I didn't know. But there you go. You learn something new every day. So... Because I didn't find a whole lot on the nymphs in the broader term, other than a lot, and I do mean a lot, of classical artwork depicting them frolicking, being raped, actually consenting to sex, and various other forms, you don't really see nymphs in popular culture very often. Fact. My list is actually, there's four things on my list. One of those is a very broad subject heading of mostly paintings. The other pop art things that I could find were, apparently they were mentioned in C.L., I'm sorry, C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, and they were definitely in Hercules for that brief little period when Hercules, in Disney's version of Hercules, when uh, Hercules meets Phil for the first time and he sees a little little goat butt sticking out of the bush and the nymphs on the other side. And the only reason you know they're nymphs 
other than the fact that Phil happens to be a satyr, is the fact that he actually calls them that right before the one that transformed into a tree smacks him. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. You should watch that movie just because. They don't actually get much of the mythology right, but it has little moments of beautifulness. Just watch it. It's beautiful. Um, the only other depiction I have on here, which is amusing that it's on the one and not the other, is they were depicted a few times on Charmed. You know, Magic of Three. Which is... That show had its own list of problems, and I don't necessarily agree with how the nymphs were depicted. Because they were depicted as the satyr was actually part of the group, because their loyalty was to their satyr. Which, if you know the Greek mythology on that one is problematic. It's a very odd depiction. Now, there was still, like, that's the only part of it that I really had an issue with their depiction on Charmed was the whole satyr thing. Because, yeah, satyrs. Satyrs are fun. We'll get to them another time. Uh, let me think. Any other pop culture references I can think of off the top of my head? Yeah, it's really odd that Charmed has a creature, but Supernatural doesn't, because most of the time when I'm looking these up, they both have them. Like, every single one. It's great. Well, I mean, I can understand why Supernatural wouldn't have them. They're not exactly the scariest creatures around. Nymphs. I mean, they could be. But... It's scarier creatures you can have terrorizing the boys. Alright, my thoughts. I have not actually used nymphs in any of my stories, and I'm not entirely sure on my normal scale where they would fall. Because my normal scale is usually you have fey blood or you have demon blood. Or divine blood. But given that they're Greek, and they are in fact deities, I guess you could make the argument that they're divine blood. You could technically, depending on some of the depictions of the various types of nymphs, make the argument that they were fey, even though they don't really, they, they're not in Irish Celtic culture, which is where the fey, as far as I know and am aware, stem from. Uh, they're also not mentioned in any of my current mythical creature books, which I will grant you I've got like five, so it's not like I have a ton. But it's hard to know where to classify them. You could put them on the same level as the gods, like the Greek gods, the Roman gods, so on and so forth, because they technically are, but at the same time they're not, so it's easy to know where they would go. I could maybe see me using them in the future, depending on where I take certain stories. However, since I can't write sex scenes, nobody's getting a sexy nymph sex scene. I'm sorry, I just, I, it's not that I haven't tried to write sex scenes, it's I literally cannot write them. It makes me a little bit sad. But at the same time, it's kind of where it is, kind of where we are with that, you know. So this is a shorter video, obviously, because I don't really have a whole lot of info on the nymphs. And because, like I said, we're not delving into the specific types. We're just sticking with the general nymphs term. Because it's more fun that way. And I can do other videos later on down the road. So yeah, they're, they're, they're a creature that I could probably write and... Would not have very much issue giving them, doing them justice, given what I've seen other people doing with them.
Next week's creature. Get this. There we go. <laughs> Keep the thing actually on screen. That might help with things. Go. Who's our lucky creature this week? Dana, 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 dana. Merfolk! Yay! Mermaids! All right. So yeah, that's where we're going to end this video. Thank you for watching. I'm Beck Terry. This is Mythical Creature Comforts. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Watch my videos because you love me. I mean, come on, guys. There's 12 of you, and I'm maxing out at, like, three views for a video, and you're breaking my heart. You're breaking my heart. All right.